the University of Victoria Libraries opened our Digital Scholarship Commons, or Makerspace, in April of 2017, and it is a community plus machine space. We occupy 2,700 square feet of flexible space for workshops or individual making. We have two full-time staff members and four part-time graduate student experts and four part-time undergraduate student staff. We don't charge for any of our workshops or instruction, so the funding for staffing comes from a mix of reallocated base library funding, soft money, and for our graduate students, one-time provost funding for two years that we hope to renew. We purchase equipment for our space with base library budget money, as well as from our annual allotment from the campus-wide Vice President of Academic Equipment Fund. We loan a wide range of tools and equipment focusing on cleaner and quiet tools because of our library setting. We offer a number of introductory workshops that students can sign up for individually, and instructors can also arrange to bring their classes to workshops organized specifically for them. At the ISAM conference in 2017 at Case Western Reserve, I reported in my conference paper that in the first months we offered workshops, 55% of the registrants were women. However, because our library-based makerspace was new, there are lots of library staff attending which might have skewed the results. I am happy to report that between September 2017 and April 2018, the percentage of women participating in workshops has remained at approximately 55%, which was unexpected but wonderful. This number is in line with our university registration statistics. There are three reasons why we think that the makeup of our workshop mirrors our university population. First, our makerspace is housed in the library, which is traditionally common ground without any formal attachment to male-dominated faculties or departments on campus. Second, related to that, our space is not only open to students from all over campus, but welcomes the whole campus community, including faculty, staff, and students. And third, the workshop format is a low-stakes way to be introduced to the makerspace, especially for those who are interested but don't have a project in mind. To explore each of these three points, I interviewed a student who used our makerspace workshops and tools to help her create a prototype of a biodegradable glow stick Paige Whitehead is a third-year microbiology and environmental studies student who loves music festivals but doesn't like all of the garbage they create, especially the toxic chemicals in almost all glow sticks. I interviewed Paige to talk about how our library makerspace helped her with her biodegradable glow stick project. And actually run as a full-on um, you know, a lesson that was more structured mm -hmm. is, is just great, especially someone going as a, you know, fully, you know, don't know much about the topic kind of yeah. person. It was an awesome introductory lesson, especially with the, you know, the kind of portion parts where you learn the software and then learning on the actual 3D printing machine. And it's also so nice, you don't actually have to take a whole course in it. You can come for an afternoon and leave with a new skill that you can actually use and keep building on your own and then come back if you want to upgrade or refresh but you don't actually have to you know enroll in a program or you know declare a major or a minor to actually mm -hmm. unlearn the material people but if you have no background in you know electrical engineering mm -hmm. or in software design or using these 3D modeling programs it's really helpful to have an instructor there to just give you the basic foundations mm -hmm. and that's really what this digital scholarship comment is all about. Yeah. So that's really what I've done is gotten taking these courses here, feel like I then have the foundations or at least know the language enough that I can ask the right questions mm -hmm. to continue kind of building up my um, experience using these tools. Yeah. If, if like a library is especially at university, it's kind of the neutral zone. <laughs> there's, there's sometimes, you know, like, there's the engineers, and you know, they maybe rag on like, philosophy students, and back and forth, and back and forth. But the library is really this kind of common ground where there's, there's 
everything you need for any subject it would be in like a, somewhere in the library mm -hmm. and then I'm, people are always walking through and studying here so I think even just having it in a space where it's kind of this neutral everyone is welcome zone absolutely um, I know quite a few people feel intimidated or not welcome in certain you know buildings on campus mm -hmm. because of maybe their gender maybe their um, their what they're studying for like this whole suite of reasons yeah. Um, but I feel like a library is probably one of the least intimidating in, in that sense mm -hmm. for, for any, every student is welcome. Yeah.